ambition is the great fire. It's the liberator of the unconscious person, you know? It's like the first requirement of all action. I have no fear. I have only ambition, and I want mine, and I will do anything to protect and feed my family. Yo, 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 welcome to the ambition. Hey, what's going on, man? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. All right, making sure that you, uh, you there so we can hear you clearly and everything. How you feel this evening? Shit, I'm feeling really good. That's what's up, that's what's up. Okay, okay, okay. And where you from? I'm from Fort Myers. Well, actually, originally I was born in Cuba, but right now I'm in Fort Myers. Now you're in Fort Myers, okay, okay, okay. And yeah. um, and, and introduce yourself to the people. What's your name? My name is Perico Papi. Perico, Perico Papi. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 So, so, so it's obvious you got you know Spanish roots and everything. So, so you part right. Cuban? Is you part Cuban? That's what it is. Yeah, I'm part Cuban and I got some Dominican in me too. Okay. 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 All right. All right. Yeah. So. So let's get right into it. So, what inspired the name Perico Poppy? I mean, you know, just the, the work I do, you feel me? Okay, <laughs> so okay. Yeah, I ain't gonna get too much into that, but. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. I got you, I got you. So, <laughs> so, so, so you grew up, so you grew up in Cuba. What city? Well, I, I was you was born, born, born in Cuba. In Havana. Okay, okay, okay. Did you spend a lot of time yeah. in Cuba? What's up? Did you spend a lot of time in Cuba? No, we, we moved down here when I was like three. Okay. Like, originally we moved to Pennsylvania, I lived out there for a year, two years, and then we moved down here to Florida, and I've been living here ever since. Okay, okay, okay. I got you, I got you. So, so Fort Myers yeah. was the next destination then? I said Fort Myers was the next destination from Cuba. Well, Fort Myers is where I moved back to, like, I lived in that Northport and shit, and then Sarasota, Miami, and then now uh, I'm in Fort Myers for the last two, three years, so. Okay, okay. No, what I'm saying is, yeah, what I'm I've been all over Florida. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. So, so, so when you get the, so when you got to Fort Myers and everything, what was, what was your, um, what was the neighborhood like? What was the name of the neighborhood, your first neighborhood you grew up in? In Fort Myers. In Fort Myers? Yeah. Oh well, shit. Well, I don't know what they call it, what they call it here, but I'm still in the same spot. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Alright, all right, so they go do they go by do they go by neighborhoods or do they go by like street names if you want to identify by, a certain like, street things? names. Oh, yeah, okay. Street name, man. Okay, okay, okay. It's kind of like that in the Midwest too. So by street names. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, so being a youngin, you know what I mean, in that area and everything that you grew up in, what was the uh, the culture of the people like? What was the culture of the people? Yeah. What was the neighborhood like? What was the feel of the neighborhood? I mean, it was a little bit of everybody. You know, you got your Spanish, black, everything. Just everything mixed in together. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. A lot of diversity. Okay, okay, I got you. I got you. Was it was it a lot of uh was it a lot of violence? Was it like balance and everything like that? I mean we we, we got a time where it gets wild and then it be calming down for a while, but you know, with the city of festival with drugs and shit, that shit. You know how that goes. Right, 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 right. Okay then. All right, so so the neighborhood was kind of like an area that was affected by some of the you know drug use in the you know in the city and you know violence has been going on, so it was affected. Yeah. Okay, I got, you. I got you. I got you. So inside the household, when you got your moms and your pops, how was your moms and pops? Was y'all cool, or you know what I mean? How did you grow up? I mean, my my dad did. Okay. Yeah, okay. but I didn't take care of my mom, so yeah, she good. Okay, 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 okay. I got you, I got you. So, so, what did mom kind of teach you? Because you got the outside of the community that's, you know, how you mentioned, you know, pretty much probably like everybody neighborhood. You got some violence here and there. You got shit going on or whatever and everything like that. Right, right. What was going on kind of like in the household that able to make you kind of like be cool so you won't be affected so much of it? Because if you out there really out there really in it, it's like it's going to affect you more than if you have balance like from, you know, 
some type of teeth. I mean, I ain't really had that much down because it's going on my work to life. Because, you know, you got to pay bills and shit. So okay. A lot of times I was on my own. Okay, okay, okay. That sound like around, around like what age you felt like that? <sighs> shit, since I'm young, you know? Okay. <laughs> Okay. Because we moved out here from Cuba and she ain't really got that, we didn't have that much family out here. There was not much help, so, you know, she had to work and work to provide for us. Okay, okay, okay. So, so it was kind of like, you know what I mean, it's a new location. Um, we don't know anybody too much, but by me being Mama Dukes, I gotta be out here be like the Queen Lion and shit. I gotta get out, get out there and go get it. And sometimes the young cub gotta stay behind. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Kind of figure out stuff. Okay, okay, I got you. I got you in that. All right. So, so when you was a young and everything, and moms is working and everything like that, and you pretty much to yourself, what what did you start seeing about you artistically? Like whether it was drawing, whether it was the rap music, or anything like that. Well, see, when I was young, I used to like draw a lot. Okay. And I like listening to music. Okay, okay, okay. What, yeah, what was your influences back then when you was young like that? What were you listening to? Ooh, I was listening to a lot of DMX, Jay Z, Nas, stuff like that. A okay. lot of New York rappers and all that. And Sweet Dog, a lot of West Coast too. Okay, 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 a lot of West Coast. Did you did you did you ever like 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 the moms ever play like the Spanish music like the Cuban music from the homeland? Uh, all the time. Okay, all okay, time, okay, okay, okay. So so you had the hip hop mixed in with the Cuban. That's how I was trying to figure. Yeah. You know what I mean? You had the cultures yeah. you know collide like that. All right. She, she, she only speaks Spanish, so she never got into the that kind of music. So it was just from her from her side, it was all that Spanish music. You know the batata, the going all that. Okay, 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 okay. I got you. I got you. All right. So, um, at what point? At what point did the music start to hit you? Like you listen to Nas, listen to Jay Z, got the West Coast going. So, at what point did you did the music hit you? Like you know what? Let me write my own shit. Let me let, let me put my pen together and write my own. I mean, I, st- I started experimenting with it during like middle school. It started out from like writing poetry, poetry and stuff. Okay. And then I started trying to trying to write my own lyrics, but but at that time I it would just be you know just just lyrics, lyrics, lyrics. There was no structure to it. Right. So I had to I had to learn all that. All right. Okay. Okay. So that was how that that was pretty much pretty much like middle school when you like uh start start really pretty much getting. So you do you remember your first song that you wrote? <sighs> well, I don't even remember. <laughs> okay. I don't okay. know how at this point. Right, right, right. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So so you looking at you looking at you looking at middle school. So what what was the environment at middle school? What I mean was the you know, was the students like, you know, you know, cool? Was it like an educational type of thing where the art can like thrive at? Or was it more of um you had good art and then the school was kind of fucking with it, like you couldn't concentrate on it? I mean, school was, like, middle school, at, like, fifth grade, it was cool. The school I was in, I was in the North Point time. It was a really cool school. It, and then I moved to Sarasota around, like, like seventh grade, and then everything was different, because in Sarasota, a lot of people out there were racist, so, uh. you know, it, it, it was a bad family at first. Okay, okay. So, so what would you think was the biggest cultural shift from living in um in Fort Myers and moving to Sarasota, what was the biggest thing you noticed that was different? Well, Sarasota, the yeah. difference is there's a, there's a lot of rich white people out there. Okay. And like, and the kids there are really like privileged and racist kind of. Okay. And like they they don't know how to act. You know, you feel me? Okay. Cause I didn't know what they know about racist shit, so there's a lot of conflict with that. Okay, okay. So, so, so they wasn't like kind and humble, like you know what I'm saying. And more was like putting nah. their nose up to you, like we better than you type of shit. Pretty, pretty much out there, everybody, each culture is to their own. You feel me? Like okay. there ain't no diver- there's a little diversity here and there, but for the most part, hey, everybody's to their own. Like you got the Latinos, the Latinos, the blacks, the blacks. Hmm. I mean, it's kind of messed up, but that's how it is. So, so, 
So, so it was like really segregated then. Like the blacks only fuck with the blacks, and Latinos only fuck with. Okay. And that, that's what really messed me up because I was going around diversity and whatnot. I was cool with everybody, and then going from that to that segregation, that, that messed with me a little bit. Ah, uh, yeah, because because you listen to you listening to you know Cuban music, Spanish music, then you got the hip hop music going, and it's like, damn, like you know what I'm saying? You influenced by different cultures, so they probably want you to take sides and shit. Right, exactly. Okay, 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 I got you, I got you. So when you get up out of middle school, and you get into high school, you should be like 15, 14, 15, around that age. At what point did the art excel from there? You know what I mean? At what point, man? Okay, when you reach, when you reach like high school, you like 14, uh-huh. 15, at what point did the art kind of like excel to be more, to be better? Because you start off with the poems and everything like that, and you started your first right. joint, but then how did it excel as you started to get older? Because you know, when you're 15, you starting to get into your own manhood shit, right? You know what I mean? You starting to change, you're going through puberty, so how did the art change? I mean, during the high school days, you know, I kind of fell into a little depression and shit in my life in my head. And I kind of, I ended up dropping out and I moved, that's when I moved to Miami and shit. So I wasn't really doing too much music at that time. I was starting to, you know, get into like freestyle and all that. Uh-huh. But I wasn't doing it heavy, heavy at that time. Okay, okay, okay. So, so you stepped to Miami. Miami's still Spanish culture. Your art, right, right. your art don't, can't completely die because my, that's Miami. Right, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you got it both there. You know what I'm saying? So um, how did Miami treat you when you first uh, got down? What was the difference between Miami and Sarasota? Miami got that diversity too, because it's, it's, it's everybody there. Everybody there. You got every single culture just mixed in together. Okay, so yeah. Miami at that time, it was wild. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So you felt more in then, right? Because because Sarasota was really segregated. So now you felt more yeah. kind of like at home, kind of like, yeah, I could dig this. Yeah, it was, it, was a lot, it was a lot better. That's the damn thing. Okay, okay, okay. I got you, I got you. So so while you in Miami and everything like that, at what point did um, you, know, you say like, hey, you know what I mean? I st- I'm still got interest in hip-hop. What was you listening to when you was in Miami? What was the shit bumping at then? At that time... At that time, my, my, my music, like, was a lot different. Like, I listened to a lot of words, but I was also listening to, like, like screamo bands and stuff like that, and a lot of dub stuff, too. So it was, it was all over the place. I was getting influenced from all over the place. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. And then, um, uh-huh. um did you put out any projects while you was in uh, Miami, or what? Or were you just, like, just soaking up the culture and everything? I said when you was in Miami, did you put out any you know any projects and everything, or was you just soaking up the uh, the culture and the environment? I had dropped a, I had dropped that cool freestyle for my cousin. Like, that was years ago. But really, I, I went out there to. I was supposed to go out there for school and focus on school, but that didn't work. I ended up back in the streets again. Okay, 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 okay. So, so you in Miami, you know, you're doing your thing in Miami, surviving, pushing it, learning the culture, increasing the art. So at what point does the art start to pull you away from the streets? It started pulling me away from the streets when actually I, I ended up leaving Miami. I went back to Sarasota again. Okay. Okay. So you hit Sarasota. Then what? I mean, I mean, what happens then? Do you feel like okay, I'm gonna start taking rap more seriously, or do you what? What happens? At, the, at that point, my, my homies that I originally started rapping with back in middle school, he, he was still you know rapping and stuff, and he had his little little microphone set up in his, in his house and stuff. So I started okay. messing around with him a little more, and I started getting better and better slowly. Cause at that time he was he was real good. And I was learning from him, so I, I kept sticking with it. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So, the music at that time, when you was at, at your homeboy house and everything like that, um, what was the music like then? Was it more, was it more like what you seen in the streets? 
Because you know how you put the, you know, what you see in the environment, you really put into the music. So, I, so if you was in Miami, you see certain shit. So we get the time to talk about it, especially lyrically for You might talk about that or you might talk about something different. So, so what was the content? What was the lyrical content around that time when you was on the mic? At that point, we were doing a lot of house parties and stuff. So it'd be a lot of party music. But then, you know, we still got that, that street element to it here and there. Got those street tracks too. Okay, but so you was a lot of party music then. <laughs> Okay, so you was performing at the house party. A little bit. Okay. Here and there. Okay, 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 okay. How does well, 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 tell us, you know, as the listener and everything, because that's really, or is it your first kind of performance? If you think as a hip hop artist, you know what I mean, or as an artist in general, you kind of like remember the first time you ever like did your art in front of a group of people. That's like your first performance. So, right, right. so, so, would you consider like the house parties like your first? You know, your first opportunity is like perform in front of a crowd of people or a stage type of situation? Well, I'd say so. Okay. So I know it's always perform in front of people, like, you know, freestyling, you know, get a group of homies and stuff. And, you know, you got the outside watches and stuff. Okay, 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 okay. All right, all so right. So that, that, that'd be like the first, I guess. Okay, okay. So... So you at the house parties, y'all do a couple joints and everything. You rocking with your homeboy again and everything. You start to get more into it. So what happens next? Do you start creating more songs for upcoming projects? Or what do you do at that point? Well, at that point, like, life was kind of complicated, you feel okay. me? So it, it was hard to, you know, get to really focus on that music at that point. But... All right, okay. I, I, you know, there's been a lot of ups and downs with it, but... Because, you know, money-wise, it always had the best, you know, upcoming. Right, right, so right. So you had to make work. Right, right. So what... So what kept you on track with it? You know, you know, you, and you explained it to us, like, hey, you know, it was hard, it was difficult. What kept giving you the inspiration and the ambition and the drive to just keep on pushing through the shit? Whatever was hard, you had to keep pushing it because we wouldn't be here now with the music, right? So you had to keep right, pushing it. it. So what was it that just kept giving you that drive? Like, man, I still got to fuck with this. Like, I, I like writing, and, and also I do a lot of, I mean, I'm kind of like bipolar, so I do a lot of that shit daily basis, man. Just the music, just writing and all that, it just makes, it makes me feel good, you feel me? So I just kept sticking to it. I kept writing and writing, and it started getting better and better, so it just kept motivating me to keep doing it. And then, you know, once the money started coming in, that's when it made want to motivate you more. Right, 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 right. Okay, okay. So so you would consider yourself a writer before a rapper? Because you started off with poetry, pretty much. Yeah. Because I, I was always good at writing in school. Like, I could write stories and all that. But like, I, I, I was a really good writer. It just took a while to take writing, like, you know, essays and stuff like that and actually writing, like, 16 bars and, and all that jazz. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, because you didn't mention that. You didn't mention, because I know we had mentioned, you know what I'm saying, with the drawing, but you never mentioned, like, the love of the writing. So that's good. That's, like, literature. Like, like did you read, like, a lot of books yeah. or what? Yeah, between, like, elementary and middle school, before, you know, I started acting out, I read a lot of books, but I was always a good reader, too. That was always one of my strong points. Good, good, good. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of MCs and a lot of rappers. I mean, and you know, in your generation, of we feel like it's, it's not important to read. You know, you gotta read. Exactly. Man, you, you know what I'm saying? You gotta read them books. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of stuff in them books, man. Like for real. So, that's what's dope. That's good to hear that and everything. So, did your, did your lyrical content start to change into something different? You know what I'm saying? After um, um, you took kind of like a little break. You said like shit was going on or whatever. Um, you weren't too focused into it, but when you start getting back into it, what did did the right. lyrical content change or what changed after that? Once you start getting back on track, when you start like, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start writing again or getting more involved. Yeah, you know, well, after I took that little break, I started. You know, the songs had more like how do I how do I say it's like. I don't know, the song kind of have like more meaning to it, more more structure and whatnot. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. I, I spent a lot of time listening to music and like, 
like, trying to break down how other artists do it, you feel me? How they, like, go about writing their songs and whatnot. Okay. And turn it into, make it actually an actual song, not just, you know, just doing a bunch of raps and rhyming and stuff like that. Like, okay, so, like, like, um, I mean, I just want to see if I get you right. Like, remember, remember Hustle and Flow, right? Right. Remember when dude was like saying, right yeah, remember when dude was like saying, like, man, you got a lot of flow, man, but we got to structure that shit into like one right. song. So it was like that then. Yeah. Okay, okay, I got you, I got you. I want people. I, I just thought you were practicing this to, to get to this point and hopefully get it even further. So it's going to pay off. All right, all right, all right. So, so, what, what really like motivates you to be like more than like an average rapper like sometimes people some rappers go in there and be like you know i'm going and just say whatever for the bag or for the money whatever and you got some rappers that go in there and be like hey i want to have good art i want to say some real shit you know what i'm saying i'm gonna get the money but i'm gonna i'm gonna say some real shit so what motivates you to separate yourself from the others well basically i know i'm gonna get money regardless at this point so it ain't even about doing it for the money it's about just that feeling you get once you go in the booth and you drop something hot and then you listen to it, it's just, I don't know, it's something that, that I just love having and I want to keep doing it. And hopefully everybody else that listens to it is going to feel the same way I feel when I listen to it. Right, 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 right. Because, because with the art, with the art with you from listening to you, it's kind of like, it's kind of like the music and writing, it's like therapy or something, right? It's kind of like it's getting, yeah. it, it gets shit like off your chest and everything, man. You might, like, like you rather say it in a rhyme and actually go like fuck a person up like with, with a baseball bat or something. You know what I'm saying? Cause you just stabbed about some shit. You know what I'm saying? You feel what I'm saying? Uh, it, 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 it keeps me out of trouble. That's the damn shit, man. You see what I'm saying? There you go. There you go. Like for real. I, I, I yeah, yeah. I definitely can understand that. Bet, bet. So, you know, you can, you can only do this piece shit for so long before it is, you know, it comes to your time. Right, right. But right, why do you think, speaking of that, why do you think, like, um, some young males think that, um, that they can just do it forever? You know what I'm saying? I mean, I mean, what is in their brains? Is it because, is it, do you think it becomes an addiction to the, to a lifestyle or whatever, or... What do you think it is? Because if they know that it could be an end of the road, if you know, like, hey, I can really get jammed up in some crazy stuff, shouldn't it be more right. predicting when you're going to stop? Like, man, I got to stop when I get to this, or I got to stop when I get to that, man. I just can't keep going. I mean, it's start getting to a point where you can't stop. You start getting so deep into it that it just starts consuming you. You know, over time, it starts getting to the point where it's getting no fuck no more. Mm. So... Some people don't see that. Like, like, with every, every little step you start taking deeper in it, it starts just smacking your soul even more. And then next thing you know, you in too deep and you don't know how to get out now. Right, 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 right. So you definitely got to be able to, I think you got to be able to flip it like into the music and shit. And that way it's like more cool and legal that way and stuff. But you just get, still get to tell the story. It's like you're a veteran. Yeah. Like you came yeah. back from war and shit. Like you telling all the youngins now, like, yeah. hey, this is the yeah. war stories and shit. Hey, a lot, a lot of rappers don't glorify the, the the good part, but they don't really talk about you know the the messed up part about it. And that's what that's what fucks up with a lot of these kids' heads. They think that it's just all easy, easy, but not. Nah, it ain't it ain't even close to what they make it seem. With those artists over here trying to make it seem like it's like. Right, yeah, yeah, because they only they don't put no balance to it. They always talk about the the good shit, the bitches, the the clothes, the money and shit. But they don't get to the the mamas crying, the kids don't have their fathers and shit, and n niggas trying to uh -huh. fuck your girl and all that shit. Niggas and rivals and shit trying to shoot your house up and break the break breaking your house and shit because they know you ain't there. Shit, like uh -huh. you know what I mean? All that, like. Yeah, man. Yeah, because if more of that is being being told, then it, it is some balance. Then, then they could be like, because it's easy to go down that tunnel if you don't know what's in that tunnel, kind of like you know what I'm saying. If you like, yeah. like, you know what I'm saying. You can, you know, you can't, you don't have no balance to it. So definitely, exactly. definitely, definitely. I can, yeah, 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 yeah. That's dope. So, so what do you think as a growing up? You know what I'm saying in 
Sarasota and you know, you know, being from being from uh, Cuba because you know you take them Cuban jeans with you wherever you go, so that's in your culture. Oh, that's exactly. in you every day. You know what I'm saying? Being in Miami and everything like that. What do you think um defines you as a man? Like, you know what I mean? What event in your life to be like, hey, man, I gotta be like on my man shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? I gotta like hold it down. Well, I gotta what who defines me as a man or Yeah. Shit. I don't know, I just I just like working hard and achieving goals and just moving forward. Like there was a point in my life where it was messed up and I didn't know where I was headed, but now now I got the vision and the plan in my head and I just know I gotta stick to it and everything good gonna come with it. Cause if a nigga gotta take care of his mom and my family and shit, so right, right, I ain't got time to be messing around. Right, 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 right. I got you. So, so that is the inspiration. Like Mama Dukes and everything, the family and everything. It's kind of like you taking the the leadership role. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It'd be like, like I gotta, I gotta fix whatever situation it is. It's gonna keep me away from y'all. I gotta like keep me here with y'all. So I gotta do like exactly. boom. Yeah, I feel you on that. That's like what's up. That's what's up. So, so what was what was the first project you put out? You think like the first? If it was the first mixtape. First EP, is it the still first available? The project I put out is, is a, a little, little album named uh, About Time Volume 1. And, okay. But at that time, I was going by the rap name Low Key. Okay. Is that still available? And, yeah, that's still available on that trip, but the quality is horrible. Okay. <laughs> okay. I don't know, we got to get the vintage, you, man. You know, you had to wear what I had, man. Yeah, man, we got to get the vintage you, man. I'm sure if we go back and listen to Eminem's first songs and shit, that shit got value, right? You see yourself going to the future. You know what I'm saying? Being mega. being mega. So we got we still got to go back and creep the first beginnings now to see the growth. Got to see the growth, right? You know what I'm saying? That's what's up. That's what's up. So, so after that, what was the next project? What was the next after that? I believe it was called... Uh... Moral of the story. Okay. And and um did you see yourself uh growing in, 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 in content? Um how did how did it change from the about time joint? The, the quality, because at, at those times I was mixing my own joints and stuff. Okay. But the, the quality and the flow started progressing better. I started getting better at my flow and delivery and not running out of breath as much. Okay. Okay, okay. And, and um and who was you listening to around that time? What's up? I said I said who was you listening to around that time when you when you uh hey, around that time? Yeah. yeah. Like Kendrick Lamar, Schoolboy Q, ASAP Rocky, J Rock. Okay, okay. And That's some good musical influences right there. That That'll bring it up. Yeah, That'll bring music has, the music I listen to, it, it doesn't change that because I listen to I listen to all kinds of stuff. Uh huh. Okay, okay, okay. I just I just like appreciating other people's art, you know. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. So um the lyrics you know, the lyrics pretty much began to change, you became better and everything like that. What is what is some of the things that you want to talk more about in your music that you haven't touched on yet? What are what are more things you want to be able to talk about in your music that you haven't touched on yet? I mean, I pretty much talk about everything. I don't really hold back. Okay. Like, I talk. I talk about my feelings, what I see on a daily basis, what I have been been through. Okay. It's okay. All, it's all art, you know. Okay. So I'm gonna ask you this question. And um, just be one hundred real with it. If you was just say you was in a boxing match, right? And your lyrics, your lyrics, your lyrics um is like your skills, like you a boxer. And who would you want to be able to be in a ring with you to fight for the championship? Who would you go toe to toe with lyrically? Who like like uh, artist wise or like a boxer? Artist, artist wise, artist wise. The boxer is the analogy. Oh, you know how they say, you know how they say to be the greatest, you gotta beat the greatest. Right? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like it's like Jordan Kobe or some shit. You know what I'm saying? It's well, kinda like I don't have to go to the, the one of the biggest influences that I had, which has been Gucci. 
Gucci? That's okay. That's been my number one influence, so I'd have to go up against him, so. Right, right, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> but, you know what I mean? I mean, the reason, the reason why I ask that too, man, because sometimes it's like, I feel like in art, I mean, if you coming up in art and you have an inspiration, just say like Gucci. I feel like you can respect right. Gucci, but you can't respect him so much you won't go past him. Right? right? I think that's the problem we have sometimes. People be like, man, like I like this artist, but then you'll know like you should you should be elevating past him. You gotta keep setting the bar. You know what I'm saying? You gotta exactly. keep going. You know what I mean? And the only way you're gonna be able to do it is if you go against the champion. Cause you're gonna learn exactly. some shit. He gonna so he gonna hit he gonna, like if it was boxing, you're gonna get hit with some shit and you're gonna learn some shit. You'll be like, damn, uh -huh. that, those bars was dope. I didn't even know he could come like that. Okay, next time I know I need to, you know, you will know some shit. Like, it's about, it's an right yeah, there. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like, that's like, that's like really important, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Cause we gotta, I mean, we gotta go past the greatest, man. So somebody, so the ones that come after us can go and try to go past us and keep on pushing the bar higher and keep pushing the bar higher and higher and higher, man. Keep getting, make the art even better and better and better. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I'm just trying to be the best I can be and keep beating myself every time I can. Keep out doing myself. Right, 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 right. And hopefully one day get to that point. Right. So, so by so by being in by being in Fort Myers land, you, you know, and it, and it's like, what is it? What is it about um the culture in the city that that helps you with your art? You know what I mean? Because we always it's talk wild, about... Eh? Yeah. <laughs> it's wild, and I, <laughs> lately I've been hella wild, so it, it's been going hand in hand. Okay, okay. So you've been able to know how to balance it then? Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. I got you, I got you, I got you. So if you could describe Fort Myers to everybody who don't pretty too much know it, because you know, Fort Myers is pretty synonymous with plies and everything like that, but from your perspective, give me three words that describe the city. Grimy. Let's see what else. It's hella crazy out here. Yeah. Hella crazy. <laughs> Let's see what the last one will be. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's entertaining. I ain't gonna lie. It's entertaining. Entertaining. Okay. Okay. Entertaining is a plus. Is it? Is it entertaining? Mm -hmm. Is it entertaining? Saying like, damn, dudes over there fucking fighting for real, dog. That shit's crazy as hell. Watching. Uh, yeah. Entertaining. You, you, you see, you see, some things on a daily basis, you know. Okay. Be crazy, see? okay. 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 <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I got you. I got you. I got you. And how the ladies out there, man? Man, should we shout out the ladies of Fort Myers or what? Ladies out here, they they fine, but the STD races. They what? What'd you say? Be right here. Okay, okay, okay. Give us some ups, man. What you mean, be careful, man? Like, like what that mean? I'm the, the STD rate. Oh, okay. Here. Okay. High STD rate, huh? Okay, yeah. okay. People getting it in, I give them a the fuck, huh? <laughs> like, for real, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Straight it's in, man. Uh, so, yeah. It's more funny than you Man. Hell no, no. That's just crazy, man. You gotta get... Yeah, yeah, man. Good looking out, man. Good looking out, man. Like, for real. That's, that, 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 that's important. That's important, man. That's probably one of the hella crazy things and shit, you know. So, so if we look at if we look at Fort Myers on that level, right, and then we then we also have to be fair. So we have to say like, you know, if there's night, there's daytime. There's good, there's bad. So, what is the right. good you feel like coming out of Fort Myers? That's that's good. What's good out of Fort Myers? Yeah. I mean, it's a lot of culture. So you got, like, you got diversity. You can go eat at different restaurants and taste different cultures and whatnot. And some decent, some decent little sites to see historical buildings and all that. Okay, okay. okay. You know, got a nice little beach, too. Okay, 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 okay. All right, that's what's up, that's what's up. And what is the, where's the spot to go eat at? If we slide through Fort Myers and everything, we trying to get some some good Spanish food, some good, you know what I'm saying, cultural food and everything. What's like that number one spot? That number one spot? Yeah. Oh, shit. Uh, that number one spot is Fort Myers. Okay. 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 Okay.
Okay, 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 okay. What's the name of it? It's uh, I mean, my name. Okay. No, okay. that's your spot right there. Okay, that's the spot then, huh? That's the okay, okay. I got that. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, so and, and when we looking at when we looking at back at the music and everything, um, what? What projects? What projects you got going on coming up this year, two thousand nineteen? Right now, I got this uh, that EP dropping on the 14th. It's called Underworld Kid. It's gonna be, it's gonna be jumping. Okay. Can can you give us a little insight without? You no, know, we don't want no two spoilers and everything like that. But give us a little insight of what it's gonna be. What it's gonna be about? The EP. It's basically it's, it's basically yeah. I've been going through a lot lately, so it's basically about you know dealing with like. Like heartbreak and you know mental mental disorders like bipo- being bipolar and whatnot and how I deal with that on a daily basis, but I still manage to you know do my thing and get shit done because you don't let nothing stop you. You feel me? It's, it's a real real motivational. You feel me? Okay, okay, okay. So motivational music. All right, I got you. I got you. Okay, okay. And um. And what about performances and everything? Where can the people and stuff be able to see you uh, do your thing at? Well, I'm going to be performing out in Miami on the 23rd of, of February okay. at the Miami Live Venue. Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right, all right. I think I did see a flyer on that. I think I did really? see a flyer on that. Okay, we're definitely going to put that out there for the people down there. To the, uh, yeah. the Trey 05. You know what I'm saying? All right, cool, cool. Yeah, that's it. I'm jumping. Bet, bet, and and um, and after you get after you get done with that performance, what you pretty much got going on for the summer? For the summer? Yeah. Well, I'm, I right now I'm in the works of getting a a few shows lined up and whatnot, and I'm trying to drop a bunch of music videos for the the whole EP and just flood the streets with this music. Okay. I'm going all in. I got. I got some merchandise I've been working on. I've okay. Been and whatnot. Got the website about to be ready soon with all that. So okay, okay. I've been working. Okay. Get this all together. Okay. So with the merchandise, can you give us a hint? Like, is it is it hats, clothes, uh, shirts, or what? I done find some shirts, some hoodies, some uh, some hats. Okay. Okay. Bad, bad, bad. Very important. Artists out there, make yeah. sure you got control of your merchandise. The merchandise, exactly. man, man, definitely, definitely. That's just that, that's good looking that you own that like right now. That's that's what's up. That's, yeah. a, that's hey, like I'm a businessman too, so I gotta you know I gotta get it in however I can. Right, 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 right. That's all in the culture. When you down in Miami, you know that Miami, yeah, exactly. man, Miami make you dog <laughs> automatically dog like for real. You start. I don't know what it is about that city, man. I mean, when I first went out there, I, I probably. Because I went to South Beach like everybody else, but still, man, it just made you want to be like, man, you got to do something, dog. You got to get it in, man. That's, you know what I'm saying? The thing like, about Miami is, it's a lot of fake, though. It's, it's, uh-huh. it's a real fake place. Uh-huh. Like, like, it's nice to go visit and whatnot, but living there, it's like, you know, it's like you said, you got to get it in. Right, right. You know, you live big balls, and like, that, but it's just like, you know, you live in the hood, and you got to get it in. It's all, people got disguises on be fun like they got it but they don't right 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 right, right. I, yeah huh miami miami yeah 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 i got yeah. you i feel you on that that's good that's good info on that like atlanta be like that too right. you know what i'm saying they be, uh-huh. they be having like the, you go when you want to flex like you got it when you don't like pretty much a lot of motherfuckers be doing that out there right Right, right, a lot right. of scammers too. <laughs> right. A lot of scammers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Especially out there on uh, uh I mean, because I was on Washington and Collins and all that, so I was seeing a lot of shit out there, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Especially when they keep driving down Ocean Drive, you know, when they be out in the cars and shit. Yeah. Yeah, man. I be seeing yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what's up. That's what's up. <laughs> so, um, anything you wanna be able to tell the listeners and everything before we come to an end and everything about who you are and how you feel, what to expect in the future and everything, um, it's on you. Shit. Well, right now I'm just, you know, I'm work, getting ready to drop all this merchandise and push that and this new music and I'm just gonna continue making new music. I've been making songs every day and this shit ain't stopping. 
Right. It ain't stopping to you to talk with this. Right. That's all I got to say about this. Right, right, right. All right, cool, cool. All right, so, man, thanks for coming on The Ambition, man. We learned a lot today, man. Like, for yeah, I appreciate it, man. It was good. You know what I'm saying? So, so, so it's good to be able... Could be able to tell our truths and our stories, man, and be able to represent where we're from in our cultures. You know what I'm saying? Because when they hear that music, they need to hear, they need to know, man. Like when they hear that, they get, they need to feel that Cuban influences and everything. And they need to feel that Fort Myers and feel that struggle and everything that you're talking about. You see what I'm saying? Exactly, man. And continue to get that exactly. in their life. You know what I'm saying? So, well, like I said, thanks again and everything, and I'll be in touch with you soon. Uh, I appreciate it.